The first thing I saw when I got to work was the isolation cart. Oh, please, I whispered, not me. But of course it was. Just another patient, the charge nurse had said. Garb up and be careful. It was 1988. I'd been at this for 16 years. I knew what to do. But I couldn't breathe in the mask. The goggles steamed up. The gloves were too big. My skin was clammy under the gown. I took extra care, but I knew I was only delaying the inevitable. I finally picked up the disposable blood pressure cuff, plastered a smile on my face, and walked in. He was small and gray, eyes too large for his face. My smile, hidden by the mask, did not reach my eyes. All he could see was fear. I need to take your blood pressure, I said. He nodded and lifted his arm ever so slightly, but it fell back to the bed. I struggled to get the cuff on his arm. The gloves kept sliding off, and the stethoscope wouldn't stay in my ears because even they were sweating. I saw only his arm. Only his arm. I heard a sharp voice behind me. Why are you dressed like that? A physician. No gloves, no mask, no gown, no goggles. Angry eyes. I mumbled something about being told to use precautions and stumbled out of the room. I don't remember that patient's name or his face, but with him, I learned what I did not want to be. Later, I held Mike's hand without gloves when dementia took him away from his partner and his parents. I smiled without a mask when Carl showed up in full Tina Turner drag. I took off the gown and Vito taught me about activism. I cried with Kathy when she relapsed. I took Angel to speak in rural clinics and saw the difference his honesty made. And Michael, dear Michael, still makes me laugh, even in the middle of his saddest stories.